What's going on guys and welcome to Thai Like a Pro. My name is Gunnar Bramer. I will be your host for this yeah, series. <laughs> um, I am the owner of Bramer's Custom Flies. If you guys want to know anything about me um, or read anything I've written or check anything out, you can head to the link in the description. I've taken my website to have a blog section. Basically I have every article I've, I've written or interviews or a podcast or anything like that. So if you want to get to know me better, feel free to check that out. Um, and before we get started, I just want to say thank you um, to everybody who submitted a question. Um, it really helped me kind of collect my thoughts and, and see where you guys, what you guys needed. There's a lot of questions that were above and beyond my ability and understanding. So um, hopefully I'll, I'll write you guys back and let you know which ones I have no idea about. But um, we're going to get started at the very beginning. I want to start with the baseline here uh, and move forward. Um, so hopefully if you're just starting out, if you're a beginner fly tire, if you just got advice yesterday, um, this, is, this is where I'd start. So we're going to start at the very beginning. This is thread basics. Um, we're going to cover basically you know, how to start your thread, why you're putting down a thread base and, and creating a, 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 a surface that's rough and has friction, uh, tying with proper tension and control, uh, basically pinch wraps, uh, pinch wraps, set, lock, um, and hopefully I have uh, an eye-opening example where I'm going to use three turns of thread and I will break my marabou before it pulls out and I will repeat it with bucktail. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to talk about threads, different threads, um, and I'm a streamer tire. That's basically this entire series is going to be focused on streamer ideas and applications and techniques and such. So if you're a, a beginner, keep that in mind, um, especially as you might progress in your own tying and do some dry flesh stuff and some nint stuff um, that I am focused on the streamer game. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. <laughs> so let's get started. And um, yeah, hope you guys like it. So I don't want to zoom this in too close to the vise, um, just because I want you guys to kind of be able to see my bobbin and my bobbin hand. But um, I'm going to come in, and you can see this this vise can actually run up at an angle, like most people's uh, vises. You typically tie at an angle. But I'm just going to go over real quick a proper kind of hook placement and a jaw system, a jaw vise system. And for the most part, and this is not 100% accurate, but you're looking for about the halfway point on your bend down to your hook barb and that is the kind of area of hook that you're uh, looking to have um, inside your jaw system that's going to give you the kind of the best grip it's the safest on the vise it's the safest on the hook and obviously it's um yeah that's just kind of industry standards for the most part uh, so that's got plenty of tying pressure on it i'm running this vise in line because i like to use my rotary features in line um, especially when i articulate things so that's proper placement. I'm going to start out, we're going to talk about threads at the end, but this is a 140 uh, Vivas power thread. It's a flat thread without wax. It's elastic in properties. We'll, we'll get to all that at the end. But to start your thread, I will basically hold my tag end, and I'm going to hold it at a slight angle. You can see this angle is towards my vise. I'm going to put two wraps right on top of each other, and that's going to give it some friction so that I can wrap that backwards. Now when you wrap backwards, you trap down your tag end. It's a pinch knot. This can't pull out because I pinched it. You see what I'm saying? So you don't have to tie a specialty knot or do anything fancy or anything to start your thread. Very simple. Now, um, for most tying, you're going to see I'm going to tie with a level bobbin. My bobbin's level. You can see that. You can move your entire hand. You can see my hand is moving up and down and up and down. The most important aspect is that you're drawing a perfect circle with the tip of your bobbin because you want constant pressure. You want this to be a perfect circle. Now most people, and it, it depends on the level of their vise, but they'll tie with their hand below their vise and they'll tie with it above their vise. And for whatever reason, and I noticed this in myself, primarily when I, I learned to reverse tie bucktail, I realized that I was building, uh, I couldn't build a perfect cone. Um, and so my bucktail, when it was reversed, it would be misshapen. And, and, and it was because my hand was below my vise, and so I would tie at an angle. You can see my thread 
is at an angle. It was not perfectly vertical as in this scenario right here. Um, so that's one of the things to watch out for is when you're tying with your bobbin, if it's level in line with your hook eye and then you rotate around that and your the center of your bobbin is kind of pivoting, uh, you'll create nice vertical loops. Um, and that's just something to, just to pay attention to and look out for if you ever reverse tie bucktail. It's kind of the most uh, obvious place to see that. Now, uh, just tying in general, constant thread pressure is the most important aspect. Constant pressure is extremely important. I, I talked about drawing that perfect circle, right, with your bobbin. You should be able to sit here and just tie forever forever without this distance changing and it's because I'm using the pressure the tension that my bobbin is set to and if you you don't need a specialty all bobbins have a certain amount of kind of pressure based on the spring loading of the ears if you have you know this uh, style of bobbin, bobbin that has the two little ear holes right that has a certain amount of pressure on it that controls the tension of your bobbin and how much tension line comes out at a specific diameter. And I will add tension. I simply pinched the thread, the spool thread, and you can see, like I can add tension and get closer to my hook and I can pull out and tie with less tension. I can pull thread out and tie with less tension. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you tie with a lot of tension or less tension. What really matters is that the tension is always consistent. Um, so you'll see if you ever watch like a, a Super Jerk or a Jerk Junior or a Skinny Dipper tutorial, I will use um, less thread tension to control the flare of my bucktail on the tail. And, and it's extremely important that you pull out thread so that you can tie with less pressure because I'm tying at less pressure than the tension on my bobbin, but that it's still consistent. You still want it to be consistent. The biggest thing I noticed when I, I taught um, my first kind of class and there was a wide range, a wide skill range, there was a few beginners there, um, they typically, they would chase their bobbin around the hook and they would tie kind of in an oval so that they were slack, they'd come up and then they'd come down and then they'd come up. They didn't draw, they were going, you know, like this instead of in a perfect circle with constant tension. And one way to check yourself is to take your thread uh, basically up to your hook eye and watch it deflect. You should be able to watch it deflect in every angle that you tie and that'll just teach you. It'll, it'll help show you where you're not applying constant pressure. So um, I'm kind of I'm putting down this infinite, really sloppy thread base right now. Thread bases are important. When you look at your hook, your hook is really thin, right? It's a smooth surface. If you were to bind a material directly on top of that smooth surface, it's probably going to slide around and move around. So when you first start your thread, you're going to want to put down a nice little typically one to two layers. I just went back and forth, two layers of thread. And I want you guys to be able to hear this. I'm gonna pause my music real quick. But this, you hear that? It's friction, right? It's a rough surface. And you can basically, the way you control friction is by how rough a surface is and by how much pressure you put on that surface. Now, if you wanna create a really rough surface, you can spin your thread. By spinning your thread, right, I mentioned earlier, this is a flat thread, you make it round. Something that's round, it has volume. When you wrap something with volume, you're gonna create little ridges on that hook. It's gonna have a rougher surface, it's gonna have more friction. You're gonna be able to secure a material more soundly. That, that comes into play, especially if you're articulating a fly, if you don't have a lot of room for your wire. Um, or if you're just tying with slick materials like a synthetic, like even, even faux bucktail, it's, it's kind of slippery, right? If you can create a rougher surface, it'll have more friction. So that's our thread base. Now I'm gonna come in and show you guys probably the most important wrap I think there is in fly tying, and it's called a pinch wrap. I'm gonna get this marabou just a little bit damp so that it's not flared out and going crazy. Um, so when you come in, I'm just going to pinch this material at whatever length, length you predetermine. I'm going to put it on top of the hook shank in a little bit, just a little bit on my side. And I'm going to come up with a slack wrap. You can see my thread is kind of just loosey-goosey. And I'm going to pull straight down. Now that first wrap is going to have a little bit of thread torque and it's going to pull that material from my side to the top. So that's why I held it on a little bit on my side. Now if you come up and your thread falls towards your hook eye like mine is, you can come over 
and spin your bobbin counterclockwise. Now when you come up it will fall towards your fingers. You see that? It's falling towards my fingers. This is super ideal. I'm actually going to zoom in real quick. So that, and we'll do that. You guys see that? So I spun my thread so when I came up and relaxed this, that pin trap is right, you can see it's falling on my finger. That gives me a lot of accuracy in that first wrap. Now I'm going to come up, and this is going to be a slight figure eight. I'm going to go from my hook eye to my bend, just a very slight figure eight. I'm going to go from my bend to my hook eye, and then I'm going to come in front, and I'm going to come in back. Now when you wrap forward and back, you lock that in place. These wraps can't back off when this is being pulled on because I, I basically lock them in place by, by wrapping over top of them. So this has three turns of thread. We did a pinch wrap, a set wrap, and a lock wrap. Now I'm going to support my hook eye so I don't hurt my vise or anything. Whoa! You see that? That has three turns of thread on it and I broke my marabou. Just shredded it. That's kind of crazy, right? You should be able to basically tie fly, marabou, hackle, chenille, um, any compressible material for the most part, and you should be able to tie it down securely with three turns of thread. Now for the most part, and I'm going to come in and repeat that with some bucktail here. Now bucktail, because that the marabou doesn't have that high of a breaking strength, that might not have been that, you know, the most impressive thing you've ever seen. <laughs> And I'm going to try it again here. So I'm going to come in, right? We're going to come in with a pinch wrap. So I'm going to come in with slack, pull straight down and compress that fully. I'm going to go from my eye towards my bend. Hope. So I'm going to come in now with some bucktail um, and try to repeat that process and just show you guys. So I'm going to come in with a completely slack, loose wrap here. Pull straight down. Now everything from here on out is under perfect constant tension. We're going to go from eye to bend, just slightly, from bend to eye, just slightly. Every time I kind of get underneath, I just put a good hard tug in that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then I'm just going to reef on this. <laughs> Look, you shouldn't physically, you can see it's just starting to loosen up. I've broke off a few of strands of bucktail here. There we go. I finally got that to pull out. That was not easy at all. And you can still see some of it's strapped down. Like three turns of thread with constant pressure is, is all you guys really ever need for any of your tying. Um, you know, as soon as you tie in a, a large clump of bucktail or as soon as you tie in a, a large bunch of synthetic, something that's not truly gonna be compressible, it becomes really helpful obviously to use uh, kind of a larger quantity of turns, larger than three, but I just want to show you guys something real quick. So we just talked about constant thread pressure. I just showed you guys uh, basically um, a set set uh, wrap, nice loose tension, pulled straight down, or a pinch set, and then a lock. That's what that technically is. And then I'm going to come and tie all that down, right? Can you imagine? This now has like 30 turns of thread on it. Like that's never going to get pulled out in its lifetime. Now something that's extremely useful is controlling the angle of bucktail or tying in rubber. And it's, and it's the idea of tying with less pressure than what my bobbin sent to, but that the pressure is still constant. So something I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out thread so that I can tie with less pressure than what my bobbin is set to. And I'm going to build a low pressure cone on top of this bucktail. Come back down, pull some more out, wrap back up. Now this pressure on this bucktail is still constant. It still has to be a perfect circle. It still has to be a perfect circle. But it's at a less tension than what my bobbin is set at. Um, and you can see I did that after I tied it in. It's already secured, it already can't go anywhere, and then I just used lower pressure wraps to basically set that uh, in place so that that's good to go. All right, so now that we got all that tied in, um, Basically, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was threads, right? And so I just tied with a 140 Vivas power thread. I'll grab my GSP over here. Uh, the 140 Vivas power thread. This is an elastic thread, right? 
uh, you guys, yeah, that might focus on that. This is an elastic thread. Um, it has some stretch into it. It has some give. It's a flat thread. It's non-waxed. It has a little bit build to it. It's my all-around purpose streamer fly tying thread for basically everything except, and this is a unique situation because I wasn't trying to get that to flare or spin or I wasn't reverse tying it and there wasn't a lot of it. For most bucktail work and for all of my deer hair work, I use a Vivis gel spun 150 denier. Uh, it's probably, a, it's a universal thread that you can use for anything, but the problem is it's a no stretch thread and it's really slick. And it's gonna show your mistakes. If you give this any slack, any slack is 100% slack with this stuff. And so it, it'll really show you if you're not doing a perfect circle. If you're doing a slight oval, there will be slack in that thread. And so it's a really good training tool to work with. It's, it has about twice the amount of, uh, twice the breaking strength as the power thread, um, which is ideal for bucktail and deer here because you can put a lot of pressure on that and compress those fibers. And when you compress a fiber, especially natural fibers, they kink. It's like, it's like kinking wire and they kind of collapse around that thread and they won't ever pull out. Um, the only other thread I use is a Danville. This is a, a heavy amount of filament thread. And I use this basically uh, for specialty bucktail work, um, for like doing tails on um, uh, body tubing bulkheads. I'll do the entire tail section with monofilament. It's just, it, it kind of helps me control the quantity of bucktail so I'm tying sparse enough. Um, it's also really useful for building uh, thread dams in front of like a fish mask. Um, because it, it'll cure clear under a UV resin. Uh, so yeah, those are the threads I use and basically I only tie in white. Um, every once in a while I'll tie in black, uh, basically only for black flies, and then I have red for whatever reason. And that's fun to tie with. I like tying with red <laughs> just because I don't really care if you can see my thread wraps because it kind of looks bloody. So. Um, so those are the only three colors I ever tie with. So hopefully that was useful for you, for you guys. Thread basics, hold the hook, start your thread, constant even pressure, tension, even tying with constant pressure at a lower tension than your, than your bobbin is set to. Um, and you can tie at a higher tension than what your bobbin is set to simply by pinching your thread spool while you tie with your fingers. I just pinch it between my thumb on the, on the back side and my finger on the front, add, add pressure while you're tying. Um, and again, using your hook deflection to make sure you're drawing a perfect circle. Uh, and you should be able to basically lock any material down with a loose pinch coming down basically with slack and then uh, and then from there on out just doing a small light figure eight kind of widening that gap putting all the tension down on top of that uh, rough surface and then by going four forward and four back you lock everything in place so that it can't loosen up if you only went forward there's nothing to stop that all from slipping. As soon as you go back over top of it, game over. So, those are the thread basics. That's everything I use and how I use it. Um, and hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, and, and I really appreciate all the feedback. And, and let me know um, what you guys think. Going from here on out. Oh, man. Next video, we got articulating flies. Oh, wire spacing, hooks, vertical loops. Um, then we got working with hackles, tails, figure eights, palmering, peck fins, uh, basically slopping, uh, saddle hackle, hen hackles. We got uh, dynamic dubbing brushes. We're going to go over vices. I have a video called the infinite fly principle. You don't want to miss that one. It's about basically being able to tie a variation of anything. Um, then we're going to go over streamer head designs, uh, basically push and jerk and surf and all jig flies and all that stuff, silhouettes and fly color. Um, hopefully I'll be adding some more stuff to that as we go, but that's what I got going on for you guys so far. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in episode two of Tie Like a Pro.